This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1360, Other Ways I'm Decluttering My Life and Mind, by Kate Flanders of kateflanders.com. And I'm your narrator, Justin Mollick, reading you blogs every single day of the year to help you live a more meaningful and positive life. We have five shows where we do that. Just search for Optimal Living Daily in the podcast app of your choice and subscribe for free to listen to a bunch of topics being narrated for you. For now, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Other Ways I'm Decluttering My Life and Mind by Kate Flanders of kateflanders.com. There was a moment right in the middle of that massive declutter I did last month where I got extremely stressed out. Just like when I felt frustrated about not being able to find the can opener in that drawer, I felt overwhelmed by how much stuff was stacked in my dining room. Why didn't I finish going through that box when I first opened it? What am I going to keep from the pile of things still in question? What if the library won't take my books? And how the heck am I going to carry all of this down to my car? Having it all out there in front of me, it felt like more of a headache than a healthy process. Once I had finally donated everything, I realized that my home was free of clutter, but my mind was still full of it. At any given moment, it seemed like I had a dozen or more thoughts running through my head. I worried about whether or not I'd be able to squeeze in a workout, what I'd eat for lunch and or dinner, how much work I'd be able to get done that day or week, when I'd find the time to catch up on blogs, how I should reply to that email so-and-so sent three days ago, when I'd get around to reading the dozens of sites I'd bookmarked, who could design a logo, when I should launch a new project, when I'd see this friend or that friend, how much I could save next month, which rowing club I should join, and the list goes on and on. None of those were bad thoughts. There were just so many of them that I constantly felt overwhelmed. For every one item I crossed off my mental to-do list, it felt like I added six more. And it's exciting to be constantly brainstorming new projects, thinking about the future, etc. But it got to the point where I didn't know what it meant to live in the present, to really pay attention to my workouts and how my recovery was going, breathe in the fresh air on my morning walks, enjoy the food I put into my body, celebrate a win at work or on the blog, and soak up every minute I spent with family and friends. Rather than being exactly where I was in the moment, I was always 12 steps ahead thinking about what's next. In an attempt to declutter my mind, this is something I'm now trying to change. And similar to how purging physical items from my home was just the beginning of my path towards living a more minimalist lifestyle, I started by identifying and removing the simple annoyances in my daily life. Number one, iPhone apps. How many apps do you have on your phone? Now, how many of them do you actually use on a daily or at least weekly basis? I was holding on to so many because I thought I might use it one day or I used to use it, but I don't use them now, so they were just clutter on my phone. I deleted close to half of my apps, including Facebook Messenger, so everything I need fits onto one screen. The most surprising benefit? I look at my phone a lot less now because there are so few apps and zero games that I get bored after a few minutes. Number two, social media. At first, this had more to do with the shopping ban as I unfollowed and unliked any store or business that sold products. It's not enough to just avoid malls. We're constantly bombarded with ads online, so I had to remove as many temptations as possible. However, once I removed all the sales ads from my feeds, I noticed there were a handful of users I'd followed months and years ago who only tweeted their new posts, all other bloggers' new posts, lists of complaints, etc., I decided to unsubscribe from the noise, so to speak, and only follow those who added to the conversation. Number three, bookmarks. If I thought I was a book hoarder, let me tell you, that collection had nothing on the hundreds of sites I'd bookmarked in Chrome. I'll read it later. I should reference that in a post. I wanna buy that or do that or make that or go there. And I'll need this for that project I'm gonna start who knows when. All of a sudden, I had probably 200 to 300 bookmarks scattered in a dozen or so random folders, and I hadn't referenced a single one of them. I went through and deleted a bunch, then organized the rest, and resolved to only add ones that I've read and truly believe I will reference again. Number four, desktop. Similar to my bookmarks in Chrome, I have a bad habit of saving all kinds of random things on my desktop. I take screenshots of things I see on the internet and want to look up later, but don't have the time to right now. Open and save text documents with literally a few bullet points about something that's on my mind and have the most disorganized folder for everything related to this blog. 
Ugh, I'm still not done cleaning that one up and I hate even thinking about looking at it. I organize the items on my desktop into folders and am trying not to add to them unless it's absolutely necessary. And number five, email. I'm not someone who aspires to reach inbox zero like so many others because it's rare for my inboxes to be filled with to-do items. No, my issue is how many personal email addresses I have. Up until a month or so ago, I think I had five email accounts connected to my iPhone, maybe six. After finally getting fed up, I took the time to log into the accounts online, delete a few, forward one, and now I'm left with two, personal and work. Beyond that, I logged into unroll.me to clean up both accounts again and am immediately unsubscribing from anything that comes in and that I don't want to see. These probably all sound like superficial ways to declutter your life, but it truly feels like a small piece of a bigger puzzle. As for some of the ways I'm trying to learn how to live in the present, we'll talk about that next week. I can tell you that I meditated for the first time this week and can see what all the fuss is about. When was the last time you cleaned up your technology and online life? You just listened to the post titled Other Ways I'm Decluttering My Life and Mind by Kate Flanders of kateflanders.com. Thank you to Kate. Digital clutter is a big one. I'm one of those people with way too many personal and work email addresses. That's why I was laughing when I read that. But it does feel like the more cluttered my desktop or phone or emails, the more disorganized I feel in my own head. That's definitely true of physical clutter too. I was just talking about this with my business partner, Lee. I feel like our spaces are a direct reflection of what's going on in our heads. And right now there's a lot going on in my head, too much. I'm hoping a lot of this will be cleared up soon and the first step will likely be a nice decluttering of both digital and physical items. Hopefully this post resonated with you too. That'll do it for today. Have a great day, great weekend if you're listening in real time and I'll see you tomorrow with a special episode for Labor Day where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.